Well, hello again. Rusty here back with you. Back here at 60. And as you see, we got some snow on the tires. And the blade hooked up. And some snow on the blade. And some dark spots out there in the driveway. Yep. I got her going. I was getting a little worried there for a little bit. Maybe I wasn't going to. It, uh, it put up a bit of a fight, I will say. It wasn't. It took me longer to get it running this go around than what it did in August of 2018 when I brought it home. Yes, I bought it in June, but I didn't get it home until about until sometime in August. So, but anyhow, I uh, I got a fire built in her and got some snow plowed out of the way and got her parked back in here. I need to. It's it's not ready to rock and roll per se uh, if you notice here on the hitch see that chunk of steel right there it's got a busted off weld on it well that was a previous attempt at making a uh, centering bar as I, I think i think it's called um i'll get in I'll, when i get inside i'll get out get open my uh 800 801 hitch manual uh, because it talks about a uh, a shipping bundle with a number 80 blade. Of course, this is not a number 80. This is an eight foot king cutter, but nonetheless, um, excuse me. In that shipping bundle, they had a uh, a bar in there, and I'll try and I'll try and do my best to show it to you. But really, what it did. If you see here where these 5 8 bolts are, I've got one there and two over there. The, let me get around here the other side. What the centering bar was, yeah, no, I tightened that back up. Anyhow, it was a bar that went from here to there, and then it had this strut going kind of diagonal and met up with it. And I don't know what the original one was made out of but see it had to it had to be a certain angle to avoid getting into the pto shield um but anyhow that was part of the shipping bundle for the number i think it was the number 80 i might be wrong on that but one of the rear grader blades that deer offered to use with the 800 801 800 800 a and 801 hitches um and what that did is if you notice on these there are no sway blocks like there are on the 20 series two cylinders so they use that centering bar to keep the draft arms from swaying back and forth now most of these you see they've got uh, sway chains that attach here and to the draw bar and those are all well and good but what happens is as you uh, go to lift, you know, them, those sway chains, they don't, they don't get any longer. So, you know, when you've got, when you've got the, the hitch raised all the way up and you've got those chains set to where it's centered behind the tractor, well, when you let it down, now it's let enough slack into them chains that it'll sway back and forth some, which probably wouldn't be a bad thing with this blade, but I've just gotten so used to a blade staying centered behind you. Um, you know, I, I prefer that. Um, something else about this tractor. And don't pay any attention to the greasy, greasy, ugly wheels and the twine wrapped around the axle. But these wheels are scooted all the way in, which isn't a problem. And, of course, kind of had to be that way when this tractor had had the duels on it. Um, but I like that about it because it's just narrow enough that even w when this blade is centered behind it and with it angled one notch to the side, I'm still taking an even cut or maybe even just a little bit this way of the tire. And, you know, I like being able to scrape out my tracks when I've got a blade on the back. Um, so I, I guess you could say that's another reason why I <clears throat> kind of wanted to leave this tractor alone. Um, 
Now I could, I've actually got two positions on the wheel that I could come out, or at least one. Um, I could take all these wedge clamps loose and move it from this outer bevel to the inner bevel. Or can I? Yeah, I can. Yeah, this is a double bevel wheel. <laughs> For a second there, I thought, well, no, you idiot, this is a drop center. But it's not a drop center, it's a double bevel. Uh, but yeah, I can I can move them out some if I need to. Um, I don't think that will work, though, with the wheels I have, or with the duels that I have. I think these are out as far as they'll go. But uh, eventually, I need to get a tube and just get them mounted up. But uh, I, I do want to put the duels on this tractor. I think I'd look slick, even though... And, okay, let me take a step back here. So, I'm trying to hold the phone kind of eyeball level here and this this floor you know it it slopes upward toward the nose of the tractor some but even at that with them short little 13 936s on the back it's always running with its nose uphill and i like a tractor to run on on a more even keel these are 616 fronts and I'd kind of like to find, I'm thinking a set of 500 or 550 15s, if they're even available anymore. I'm thinking a set of those would look pretty all right on the front of this tractor, and it would level it out some, too. But uh, I'll tell you what, guys, I uh, I really enjoyed getting back in the saddle of this thing again. That was that was nice. That was good for my soul. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't going to. I ain't going to put that off at all. That was good for my soul getting out on this thing. I, I forgot how much I actually kind of miss this tractor. Let me climb up here and kind of give you guys a, a view from the operator's platform. There we go. But that's basically my view when I'm running it. Of course, hand clutch like all the two cylinders. I I would say one of the biggest improvements on a 60 over an a was putting the throttle here um because on the a you know it would have been around here on the under your left hand which you know if that's what you're used to that's great but um and it gave your left hand something to do except shift and the way this tractor set up my uh hydraulic control my power troll lever i can take it from this side and move it over here just to give my left hand something else to do but there again i've been so used to running hydraulics with my right hand that i just i don't know that'd work too well even though <laughs> another difference on a on a power troll tractor versus a custom power troll custom power troll being two cylinder or 20 series i mean um, this is raising the hitch, and that is lowering. Now, the way these are plumbed up, it's kind of meant so that, you know, forward is always raised and backward is always lower, regardless of what it is. Um, that, that takes a lot for me to, a lot of getting used to for me. But if I stop and think about rock shaft rolling forward, rock shaft rolling backward, then it's it's not quite so difficult. Um, but it's just, it's one of them things. I've got to get, <coughs> excuse me, I've got to get shifted into a different frame of mind doing that. And of course you're, you know, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty well bog standard for the a, late A family of tractors. They shared this same... <clears throat> excuse me they shared this same shift pattern from the late a the single stick a clear through the end of the 630 and the only difference that i've ever heard about on these is you could get a two and a half mile an hour reverse gear kit for these um just to slow it down some i i, I can't remember what reverse actually is on these it's like three and a third or three and two thirds or something like that i can't remember but 
which I mean for plowing snow usually I'm in fourth gear anyway <clears throat> so you know reverse is a good bit slower but for you know like back in wagons or something where you need you know slow precise methodical control you know yeah I could see it would be a little bit rapid for that but first is over there reverse is over here there's fourth gear and second gear down and over you cross neutral and I'm not gonna do it right now but then over here on the other side you got third fifth and sixth most of the time you know <laughs> I know on the 720 diesels, second and fourth gear are the most used gears. Um, we rarely ever, ever use first gear in them. And I've only used first gear on this tractor a, a small handful of times. Um, you know, it's just, it's not too slow. It has its purpose, but for just kind of late or light everyday kind of chores, it's, yeah, it's a little on the slow side. Uh... Let me see here. I, I know I'm rambling on again, and I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm having fun. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's just, let's, let's see if she'll take off again for us. Ignition on. Give her a little bit of throttle. Yankee choke. We're in neutral. Let's see what happens. <laughs> There she goes. Generator's charging. And oil's dripping out of my power steering. Imagine that. Anyhow, there was a little, oh, my rain cap stuck. There was a little treat for those of you that like to hear these old two cylinders run. I'm sorry I don't have any footage of it chugging along working. It's, you know, <laughs> the old saying goes, you run out of right hands on a John Deere two cylinder. And, well, me being right handed, that's the hand I'm holding the camera with right now. Or the phone, I guess. Uh, <laughs> kind of makes it a chore there. We'll close that back down. That way, it, that way it doesn't run away on me. How's that? So, let's see. Well, I have babbled on here another 13 minutes about this tractor. Um, I know I haven't really showed it all that much. It doesn't get used a lot, but, you know... <sighs> even if... I don't know, man. I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. This was the first two-cylinder tractor I bought. Now, before this tractor, um, before this one, Dad actually bought for me when I was a kid. Not really bought for me, but he kind of took... It, it's a long story, and I'll, I'll tell you that one another day. But anyhow, I've got a 1944 model Slant Dash A um, that we... Long story behind that tractor, and I might sit down and tell that to you here one of these days, or we might just go dig it out of the fence row and start working on it. I don't know. We should. Uh, it sat there way too long. But I, I've got big hopes and dreams for that Model A, and, uh, you know, I, I just... I The more I've been around this tractor and the more I've used it, the more I've really grown to like it. Um, you know, even though... You know, yeah, the the hitch on it, you know, you know, I I I try not to call it a three point hitch, even though it is one, two, three points of connection. You still got this parallel link crossbar on it, so yeah, I I I don't I don't know exactly how to. It's 
technically like four points, but at the same time it's three. Hey, it, it's confusing. But anyhow, it's non-standard, and like I said, I made that gooseneck to use with this blade. Um, and I've actually got ideas and plans to take a uh, Category 1 or probably Category 2 um, commercial quick hitch and um, not necessarily rework it, but, you know, what I would do is I would uh, take this crossbar off and then these here, I'd weld tabs onto the quick hitch and then uh, put pins through that so that that way I could use standard three-point implements with an 800, 800A, or 801 hitch. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about for a long time and I, I really want to do someday. But uh, anyhow, folks, I'll give you the same outro shot here with this one that I did uh, one of the last videos. And uh, I thank you for watching. And uh, stay tuned because there's bound to be more footage of this sweet old 60 in time to come. So anyhow, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. Uh, leave me a comment. I love talking to people. Hell, you, you can tell I just, I love talking to, you know, my camera phone. I can go on and on and on for days on the right subject. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyhow, drop me a comment. Uh, I'll, uh, if you got any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. And, uh, or if you just want to say hey, say hey. I'd appreciate that all just the same. So, anyhow, guys, again, thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.